It's over there. Hello. There's a cute blonde. <laughs> we are live. <laughs> and I am with Art Leach at the Livingston County War Museum in Pontiac, Illinois. And he is going to talk a little bit about his World War II service. And Art was a Navy fighter pilot. True. Was. 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 So I'm wondering, what was your life like right before the war started? What had you get into the war? Were you drafted? Were you enlisted? What mm -hmm. happened? I was a senior in college, and in February I received a notice to report for my draft board physical. Mm -hmm. I uh, hitchhiked home about 80 miles and took my physical passed it and uh, I went to the draft board and I said you're going to let me graduate aren't you and, and they said did you uh, pass your physical and I said yes I did and they said you'll be in service in two weeks mm -hmm. and I said I didn't realize I was that important to the war effort and how much longer <clears throat> did you have you were a senior and... I uh, went across the street to the courthouse and asked a couple of the officials to give me a letter of recommendation. I said I was going to try and enlist and become a Navy pilot. Mm -hmm. And I went to a couple of the banks on the way up to my father's office and did the same thing and told my dad what I was going to do. And I hitchhiked back to college and I uh, went to the Navy recruiting station and took the preliminary physical and the paperwork that you needed and passed that. They gave me a ticket to St. Louis to do the final amount. I got down there and there must have been 2,500 guys taking physicals and taking paperwork and that. And out of all of those, two of us passed that day, just two of us. Mm -hmm. And I never saw him again. I made a deal with the Navy to let me graduate. I was going to graduate on the 8th of June, and the 10th of June I was in uniform. Wow. So they lived up to it. Uh, the Navy started pre-flight school at that time, which was, we called the muscle factory. You had half a day of uh, courses, uh, uh, academic and that, and the other half was uh, exercise, basketball, football, uh, uh, obstacle course, uh, rope climbing, uh, and girl, no, no, no girl chasing. <laughs> No girl chasing. <laughs> Only on the weekend. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> well, you had to keep exercising. <laughs> I've never heard of it referred to that way. <laughs> it, well, it is exercise. Maybe not now, but it was then. <laughs> uh, they ran faster then. Oh, did they? Yes, yes. <laughs> And then when, when your basic training was done? Um, after the pre-flight school, I went to uh, primary flight training down in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were about uh, three months there and got about 30, 35 hours of flying. And then I got sent to uh, Pensacola, Florida and uh, you had intermediate and finally uh, uh, your choice and of course you might get your choice or whatever they gave you but uh, I had asked for fighters and I got fighters. And, uh, I have a family friend whose son is going through flight training now and he asked for fighters and he called me and he says I got helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> and I think some of the people watching, um, Jason Kamlick, I know, is one. 
he's probably wondering what kind of planes did you train on? Uh, I first flew an open cockpit biplane called N2S at that time. It cost the Navy about $9,000 a piece wow. back then. And uh, after the war, they sold them for 500 bucks. <laughs> I should have bought one. <clears throat> and then we went into um, a fixed landing gear, low wing monoplane. And then from that, we went into a retractable with uh, controllable flaps and controllable pitch. And uh, after that, boy, we went into an obsolete uh, uh, aircraft that had been in the fleet. It was called the Brewster Buffalo. And, uh, it was a nice airplane yet, but it just wasn't uh, as fast as it had to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got the Hellcat when I got into advanced training. And, did you do your advanced training in Pensacola also, or? Uh, no, down in Miami and then out in uh, California and the uh, state of Washington and then out in the uh, uh, Hawaiian area, which was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you think, but I'm beginning to wonder. <laughs> So a lot of people... I'm not dead yet. I know you're not. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, I help people with World War II research in World War I and Korea and Vietnam, and a lot of people think most guys stayed with one unit the entire time they were in service, and that's just not true. And you've shown, or even one location for training, mm -hmm. and you've just shown that no, you no, you moved base about base every three months. And, and, yeah. uh, uh, we changed airplanes, of course, different uh, uh, ability on the airplane. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, of course, there were improvements coming to, like the Hellcat, they had Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, Model 4, Model 5, and uh, modifications always getting better. And, uh, yeah. and then once you were done with training, what happened? Yeah. Once I was done with training. Mm -hmm. What happened? <clears throat> Where did they send you? Um, in the Hawaiian Islands, uh, the group I was with was VF-3, uh, Air Group 3. We had bombers, torpedoes, and fighters. And then they uh, kept adding to us as the fighter squadron. We were 36 airplanes to begin with and 48 pilots and they got us up to 72 airplanes and 105 pilots and then they split us into two squadrons but of course we were all on the same aircraft carrier and we flew the same type of missions always but there were two bosses is what it amounted to and uh, it just worked out that way always. And we lost 31 out of the 105 pilots, not a single one to an enemy aircraft. Uh, all were operational accidents or uh, anti-aircraft. Uh, you'd get shells, you know, when you're coming down to strafe something by your better target, mm -hmm. but um, it just one of those things, and, uh, you'd see guys take off uh, and you'd never see them again, uh, and um, as I've always said, uh, there's no railroad tracks or concrete highways out there in the Pacific, and uh, there's no street lights either. And uh, we didn't have GPS back then. You had to navigate and you flew the airplane all the time. And some guys, you can't fly by the seat of your pants. Uh, 
your pants will be lying to you. <laughs> but if you're in a turn long enough, it feels like you're straight and narrow, you know. So you got to believe the instruments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Is there one part of your service that stands out more than others that you think people should know about? Well, I suppose getting shot at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was fortunate. Uh, I've been fortunate all my life, I think. And uh, I think there's no atheists, I'll tell you that. I've read uh, that in books, yes. that even guys uh, who didn't believe once they got no into the There's no atheists in the cockpit or in the foxhole. Mm -hmm. uh, you say a prayer without even knowing that. Yeah. And uh, when those bullets start flying by, you know, you had tracers, and they had tracers that glows a little as it goes out and it gives you a track as to whether you're on the target or not, and you can make your correction. Uh, when they go flying by, uh, you sweat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt something running down my back when we were over China, and uh, I saw those tracers fly by. And I reached back there and I said, gee, I've been wounded, but it doesn't hurt. And I wiped my hand on my back and came with just a cold sweat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And are there things that you would like the younger generation to know? You know, two of my boys, they're 13, they're wandering around, and the schools aren't really teaching about the wars so much. They get, the kids get five minutes of everything. But are there, are there certain lessons that you think that they, we should be passing down or people should know about? We do Skypes from this location to various schools and uh, uh, all over the country and uh, elsewhere. Um, uh, I have a cute teacher uh, down in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, uh, wow. and a class, and <clears throat> I have her picture at home. <laughs> She's about as cute as you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that going to be on there? Yes, it's on there. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but so uh, are you here's all the things that we can Skype and all, all the different wars. And, mm -hmm. So if you go to the Livingston County War Museum website, and I, I think yesterday I posted another link to the article I wrote, which has the links to the website, they do have a Skype in the classroom option. Yeah, you can work it out with the museum to talk to some of these fantastic mm -hmm. veterans right. that are here and learn mm -hmm. more about the wars and all mm -hmm. of the different stories that mm -hmm. are here in the museum. I did one last Friday to uh, Sacramento, California, and it turned out to be sixth graders. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't recall a white child in the class. They were all different nationalities and mm -hmm. colors. And uh, the teacher was white, but uh, those kids did a marvelous job of questioning, and they were uh, loud enough for a deaf old fighter pilot. To, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I can hear you. <laughs> Where's your husband now? My husband, I don't know where he went. <laughs> Well, that's a good one. <laughs> Where are we going now? Well, we're going to wrap this up and we'll figure that out. Okay. <laughs> Nothing backward about you, young lady. So no, when, when you're the all smoke and no fire, mm. I suppose. You never know. <laughs> so when the war ended, what happened? What happened? What happened? Where were you? Where did uh, you go? I was in um, hmm, Oceana, Virginia, mm -hmm. and I was flying uh, Corsairs, I think, at the time. And uh, 
So your the, service overseas was done and then uh, they brought you yeah, back? Yeah, we were reformed to go back out and then the war ended. And, mm. uh, we, The Navy had a point system. You got so many points for how many months you had been in service, how many months overseas, how many medals you had gotten and so on. And um, I got a medal pinned on me and by the Admiral, <clears throat> he drew blood. <laughs> <laughs> I said, ouch, but he didn't care. And your buddy Raleigh, let's just go over here. Raleigh is sitting right there. He's enjoying this. We'll be Raleigh, talking to him later. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Navy man. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then when it was all over, then you were discharged. Um, and what did you do then? I had no points to get out. And I think there were three of us that had enough. And... Uh, the skipper says, I'd like you to stay, and uh, I said, well, that R, USNR, uh, U.S. Naval Reserve, I said, that R stands for resourcefulness. I think I can make a living outside as well as in, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going home. Uh, my wife was pregnant at the time, so that influenced me mm -hmm. some. Uh, my father was his own boss. He was in insurance and real estate. And uh, I knew that he wanted me to come in with him, which I did and took my uh, exams for licensing and being a smart <coughs> guy. <laughs> I passed those too. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, I had the real estate and a broker's license for 45 years, and that's about all you are is 45 mm -hmm. or less. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good judge of <clears throat> feminine pulchritude. <laughs> When I Skype to a class, we have fun. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sure you do. Yes. <laughs> I may have to come back on a day that you all yeah. do Skype in the classroom and, and watch that. <laughs> well, we will wrap this up for now. And okay. Thank you very much for talking Good. with me. It's been my pleasure. And we will be back in just a little while with someone oh, else. With maybe. somebody more interesting. Maybe. You're all interesting. Maybe Raleigh. I don't know, but we have several people hanging out. Raleigh's a good so boy. So we will see. We'll be back in a little bit. Thanks. <laughs>